If you watched our trailer tour video, you saw some of the modifications we made to increase storage in our cupboard and drawers. In this video, we'll show you how we did those modifications. And if you haven't seen the tour video, we'll leave a link to that down below in the description and also up above as well. So this is one of the cupboards that we made modifications to. Uh, this is a cupboard that's in our bedroom. It's uh, not a really deep cupboard, but it goes from floor to ceiling. And inside the cupboard, there were no shelves. We added two shelves in here, which increased the storage space. And down here, there was only two shelves as well. This whole section here had nothing, so it was essentially completely wasted space. We added a shelf in here as well. As you can see, we were able to match the stain perfectly. You can't tell the difference from the original finish. We had a similar problem in the bathroom. This is a really large cupboard. It's over the back of the toilet. It's fairly deep and it's wide, but there was no shelf in here. So again, there's all of this completely wasted space. Adding a second shelf doubled the amount of storage space we had and made it much more useful. Here's another spot in the main bathroom. There was no shelf in here. There was so much wasted space and it took very little effort to double the storage space and make this a really useful area. I use it for cleaning supplies, extra toilet paper. In the kitchen here, Dave created these cutlery grids for me making the whole storage of our knives and forks and other commonly used kitchen utensils much neater and more accessible. Then we have a spot over here for our knives. And down here in the bottom section, again, just some custom grids that were created just to make it easier to find the things that you need when you're cooking supper. This one's a little hard to see and we didn't actually cover it in the video, but I just wanted to show you what we did in here to sort of organize the storage space. Uh, Dave just created these dividers in here. As you can see, I've got my cutting boards, my trays, and just neatens it up and makes it easier to access the stuff so it's not falling all over the place. So uh, let me show you what my plan is to get shelves put into these cupboards, the ones in uh, the master bedroom as well as in the bathroom. So what would be ideal would be to have adjustable shelves in here. And my thought was to use little plastic clips that shove into a bunch of drilled holes so you can have different levels for different uh, shelves. Um, my problem is I can't, I don't know exactly what is behind here, so I can't drill a bunch of holes in this and hope to support a shelf, nor can I get my drill close enough to there. So what I'm going to do is glue in some dark stained pieces of uh, basically three quarter inch by three quarter inch pine running top to bottom in each corner. In each of those, I will pre-drill a bunch of holes in to support the little shelf support bracket things. That'll allow us to put multiple shelves in here and Janice can adjust the height to whatever she needs. This cupboard in the bathroom is kind of an odd shaped cupboard. It's only about 14 inches across the opening. Uh, however, it goes way back in here, a good, I don't know, eight inches or something like that, and another eight inches 
to the left. So in order to get a shelf in there, I've got a problem. If I make the shelf the right size, it's not going to fit through this opening in order to be able to be passed through and installed. So I think I'm going to have to make it in two pieces. Um, I'm going to do one piece over here and one piece over here. This piece will extend from the sidewall inside there all the way to here and I've confirmed that the diagonal distance on the door will accept that size board to go through. So I'll put a shelf support strip like I talked about, the uh, three quarter inch by three quarter inch strip, one in each corner in there, one in each corner in there, and also I'll put another set here and here to support the um, edge of where the board will be split in order to fit in there. For the shelf underneath the uh, bathroom sink, same sort of deal again. I'll put the three quarter by three quarter inch strip there, here, at the back there, and here. The only issue with this is the plumbing, so I'll have to have a cutout in the shelf itself to go around those pipes that lead from the sink down into the floor. So, let's go cut some wood. So, I wasn't able to purchase any one by one, which is normally three quarter inch by three quarter inch at our local lumber store for some reason. But it's actually less expensive for me to just buy a wider board and rip it down. Of course, if you're doing this job and on the road and don't have access to a shop like I have for the next few days at least, um, buying one by one is already cut to size would be the way to go for this project. So I've got my table saw set here to just over three quarters of an inch so that I can uh, run them through the thickness planer afterwards to uh, make them exactly three quarters of an inch and be nice and smooth. These are the shelf bracket clip things that I'm going to use. Basically you drill a quarter inch hole that gets stuck into it. The shelf will then sit down on that and this little tab at the top will prevent the sh shelf from lifting back up. That might be good when going over bumps or whatever just to keep the shelves from bouncing around in there. So now I just need to drill a series of holes, quarter inch in diameter and a little more than a quarter inch deep. I think I'll put them about every inch so that leaves lots of flexibility for where you locate these and hence where the shelf will go in each of the locations we're putting them. So I got my center line marked there. So let's get that hole drilled. While it's there, I'll set a stop. Do all four of them so they're all exactly the same and the shelves will sit evenly. Just going to go ahead and mark the rest of the holes on one inch spacing. Get the second hole done now. And this stop position will allow me to do this hole and this one. And then I'll do that one and that one and that one and that one, working out from the inside. So all of the sticks will be symmetrical and all of them will be identical.
on to the next set. So now that I've got uh, all of these strips drilled, I'm just going to uh, clean them up a bit with some sandpaper round over the edges so they're not sharp. Get rid of any of this tear out at the holes and basically just make them look a little better. Now I need to start cutting shelves. What I'm using for that is half inch birch plywood. It's nice and stiff, looks fairly decent, and uh, I think it'll work great. If you're on the road and doing this project, you could get Home Depot or Lowe's or whoever you're buying the uh, lumber from to uh, cut the panels for you. Making them slightly undersized so that it's not a really tight fit. So uh, I just did a trial fit and uh, these shelves are for the be bedroom and uh, they fit well. While I was there I just marked the corners where I need to notch them for the, uh, for the strips that will be in the corners. So I will uh, leave a little extra space to account for the thickness of the shelf support and a little extra on the side as well, just to, to make them go in a little easier. And I'm gonna cut these out on a bandsaw. You could do this with numerous different small hand saws, uh, back saw, regular hand saw, coping saw. Even a hacksaw in a pinch would be sufficient to cut these little corners out if you have one in your trailer and you're out on the road. It's just sort of a rough guess as to what shape it needs to be. I'm gonna go test fit it and make any adjustments I need to. So for the uh, bottom drawer, Janice just wants a few dividers put in here just to help sort and arrange um, miscellaneous kitchen utensils. And for the top drawer, uh, what we want to do is have dividers for cutlery and also a knife holder up in this area. This is the kind of idea right here. So on the right hand side we've got knives, a little uh, block in there with slots in it to hold the knives upright and keep the blades from touching. Uh, then kitchen knives, forks, spoons, other spoons, forks, etc. Miscellaneous stuff up at the front here. So I'm going to make a grid work of half inch birch ply. I'm not going to show all of that, but I'll be back here in a second with the completed dividers. Okay, so I've got the bottom drawer stuff cut out now. I had to drill a couple of holes there to allow access to the screw heads for holding the drawer handle on. I've dadoed these for the dividers to fit into. So I'm gonna I will screw this on to the back and onto the front. And then these dividers, I'm not going to fasten in there. That'll allow Janice to remove one if she wants a wider section. But they will just drop down in. Like that. 
They still need to be sanded and uh, rough edges moved. I'm going to move on to the utensils drawer now. Okay, here we have the utensils drawer. Same sort of deal. The front and back piece. And we've got side piece here. And the divider here. There we have it. So uh, fast forward several days now since uh, I got all of these pieces cut out. Since then uh, we have moved out of our home. The shop tools and everything are in storage and uh, we're regrouping as we get ready to hit the road full time in the RV. So today I'm going to be doing the finishing on these. I need to raise the grain, stain them, clear coat them, let them dry so tomorrow we can install them. So let's fast forward through all of that effort. We're now finally at the point where Everything is finished and ready to install. If you look at the uh, pieces here, you'll see that we've got a very good match from a color point of view with the existing woodwork in the trailer. We did that by luck mostly. Uh, we picked this Varathene Espresso stain, thinking it might be close, and as it turned out, it was spot on. When we hold these pieces up against the existing woodwork, you can't tell that they weren't always here. So today um, we're going to be using a brad nailer, pneumatic brad nailer, to install all of this. Um, you could do this just with a hammer and finishing nails, uh, but I managed to borrow a brad nailer and we have onboard air in the truck and a hose, so I was, I'm able to uh, use the brad nailer to do this. just makes life a little simpler. So let's get started. So installation is just going to be a matter of tacking these strips into each corner with the brad nailer. We've confirmed ahead of time that there's something to nail to behind here. These strips don't take any load, so there's no need to go crazy with fasteners. So that should give you a pretty good idea of what we did and how we went about doing it. If you've got any comments or questions, by all means, leave them in the comment section below. Give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And once you're subscribed, hit the notification bell there so that you'll get a notification each time we release a new video. Thanks for joining us. Thanks.